My name is Anthony Eggert. I'm with the Climate Works Foundation, and our audacious project is the Drive Electric campaign, which aims to end the polluting vehicle to solve the climate crisis. I'm Steve Hamburg, Chief Scientist, the Environmental Defense Fund. Methane Sat is our audacious project, and we're fighting climate change by tracking methane emissions around the globe. I'm happy to talk on that all day. <laughs> actually, me, me too, actually. <laughs> So, so Stephen, uh, what does it mean to you to be part of this audacious process? It's really about bringing people into a community to solve a common problem that we wouldn't otherwise have access to and really leaning in to get more done more quickly. You know, that resonates a lot with me because when we look at the climate challenge, this is one of the most uh, expansive and daunting challenges of our time. And really the only way to solve it is in partnership and collaboration. And so one of the great things about this audacious process is that it's provided us both resources and connections to really expand that collaboration on a global scale. Well, I'd even add what we've seen is we've, we've actually joined with another project to create a whole new project with a synergy across the work that we were doing and they were doing to create a new idea that we also think has enormous leverage. Can you unpack that a bit? Maybe tell a little bit more about sure. that project? Sure, that was, um, was sitting in a meeting, listening to what the group working on permafrost uh, melting from Woodwall Climate Research Center and realized that that was just a piece of a larger problem. A larger problem that we're looking at with methane where we're seeing natural system feedbacks. It's not about tipping points and not about a cliff, but the, the changing environment that's actually making the overall problem worse. And we needed to highlight that. And to do that, we needed to come together and really look at it as a holistic problem. So it was what we were working on, what they were working on, and then we're in the process of making that a public and really trying to help to educate people that we've, we've got to look at this in a more holistic way if we're going to really solve the problem. So I'd like to build on that. Uh, you know, we, one of the things uh, we're really committed to is this idea of continuous learning in partnership with others. And so I fully agree, you know, oftentimes the first idea um, you know, may have some merit, but in order to get it to be realized at scale, you need to have this mindset that you, you learn and adapt as you try these things in the real world. So Stephen, we're, we're two years into our Audacious project, and what piece of advice would you give us uh, as we are continuing on in our journey? Well, I think in hindsight, we didn't do enough to prepare our donor community and our larger stakeholders for the adaptation we were going to be doing, the changes to meet our new learnings. So really sort of bringing them along in the process and the recognition that things were going to evolve in a good way and create the synergy and the adaptation that we want, but that that is a journey. We're not doing it exactly the way we said we were going to do it, and, and, and that's for the good, but needing to be sure that they understood this from the get-go. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. I, you know, we've, um, our program has evolved significantly, uh, even just in the last couple of years. Um, so when we set out to do the Audacious Project under Drive Electric, uh, one of the ideas we had was that we we're going to focus on the four biggest markets, um, that is China, India, US, and Europe. They account for about 70% of the global vehicle demand and almost 70% of the global vehicle supply. And that still remains a, a core part of our, our theory of change and the way we work. Um, but we realized that if we, went, we, if we didn't expand uh, the geographic scope of the campaign, um, we would see more and more countries being sort of left behind in this transition. And so with the support of one of the audacious donors um, who saw this same opportunity, um, we're now working to expand the campaign. I'm really excited about the conversations that I'm seeing around the world about the momentum that's building on addressing the climate crisis. It's not transparent to everyone, but we're seeing that momentum. We're seeing real progress. Is it enough, fast enough? No, but it's really there. Unlike a few years ago, where we were still in the hope mode, we're now in the reality mode, and we need to double down on that. So one of the things that's really excited to me about the, the change and the shift in the climate conversation is that um, a lot of the actions that are necessary to address the climate challenge are being shifted from being seen as a burden to an opportunity. There's a great uh, cartoon by uh, Joel Pett that shows somebody yelling in the back of the room and says, what if, what if this is all a big hoax and we create a better world for nothing? Um, and I think we have this opportunity now. We can actually create a better world that is safe for the climate and that delivers tremendous other benefits. And I think people are now starting to wake up to that opportunity.